Hi, Rob here. I'm outside. A little bit windy, but not that bad. Nice uh, spring, summer weather, sunny day. Majority of uh, golf swing problem people have it starts with the thumb on the shaft. But what happens first when people tell you to do that and put your right hand in is that your wrist and such want to do that now. I put your wrist in a strain. And the body is made that if you extend something in your muscle or tendons, your, your brain and body wants to do this. They want to return it to you. So if you straighten out your arm, you can't really, you can't relax it. Even if I'm trying to relax it, I'm not, because my brain and my body wants to do that. That's oh, because my body goes into a relaxed mode. So when people have been teaching the thumb on the grip, they create the tension in that. Now the second thing that happens is that. I put the thumb on the shaft, this is the, uh, the angle my body wants to do, and if I put my right hand, the angle just increases up the board. Then I need to do, you know, what people call the police sort of thing on the side. Now, this leads to a problem that you can never connect your body. You have this guy, Ballard, been talking about connection. You see two plus having a towel on their arms, you know, trying to, you know, swing, and you can never have the connection. You can never move your body naturally with the thumb on the shaft that everybody teaches. So a few years back, I experimented with this, the grip, and I had one of my guys ask me about it. I made a video, Hans looked at the video, and he tested it. Then uh, after a while, he went back to his old grip, but he couldn't do that. He told me that it became more difficult, and it felt very, very awkward. And I said, that's okay, you know. And he adapted to do this. So what I teach here is uh, I have a karma arthritis. I have like six, seven grips, grip tape. That's why I kept this so people have an idea. And what I do is to put it on the pad on my hand, right? Not in the fingers, in the pad on my hand, and I will wrap my thumb around the grip, right? Then I put three fingers on the grip. This is Hans' version of the grip, and he uses a pink, a little bit of an overlap here, right? That's his grip. And this will take some time to get used to, probably a few weeks, maybe even a few months, before your brain starts to tell you there. Now, the advantage of this grip is this, that people don't know when they teach golf. That every time at impact, everybody talks, you want to have this kind of angle of your elbow, you want to be a little bit bent, do that. Because in tennis, if you look at uh, Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, you know, Carlos nowadays, we hit a forehand, the elbow is like this, and the hand is in this position when they have to hit the tennis forehand. Because this is good. And the same thing applies in golf. You want this elbow to be like that in, at the impact. But then what happens is that when they put the thumb on the shaft, like they teach you in golf, your elbow has to go out. Right? You can't fit, I can kind of manipulate it in there. In Hans grip and using that version of this, the elbow goes in that position by default. My elbow stays in this position. That's perfect grip. There is no correlation at impact with the grip in the modern golf if you put the thumb on the shaft and all that stuff. Because now what you have to do is to, you have to bend your left wrist at impact. That's called a hell of a release. The second thing that happens is that your arm has to go out now. So you have to create this direction of your wrist and your arm has to go in this direction. You can see this with Tiger Woods, for example, at the impact. His elbow has already turned over. This is why he had a lot of issues with driving in his career. Because he couldn't do that impact by default. So once you have that, three fingers on the grip, lip it on the whole lap, boom. And then you have the elbow at position without you know, even trying. So that's already been set. When I teach, you know, I tell people to keep the body still and just lift the glove up and drop it, and you always hit the ground. What happens next to fix that is that we can just go to the left side, and then everything passes by. And all I'm doing here is basically drop the club and let shift to the left side. There is no problem with weight shift, there's no problem with weight transfer. The reason why you have problem with weight transfer on the golf, because when you put the club head, on the shaft and all this stuff, and it's eligible to do all this stuff, 
Now you can't do all this stuff with weight shift because your body wants to do this. You can't transfer your weight because your body wants to do that in impact. That's all because of the grip and the instruction they give you on the car. So when people start shifting to my grip, or this case, Hans version of the grip, but one of the things that happens is that one, what you need to understand is, you lift the plow up and drop it, and just let it shift to the left side like that, it's very easy to do a shift and such without, you know, constantly. The second thing that I teach people to do is that they the previous video, is tell people not to turn to put the club in his ball. And then you can find yourself hitting easy to, you know, chip shots, pitch shots, whatever you call them, without, you know, it will go straight every fucking time all of a sudden. That's how easy shipping is. There is no problem. The only shipping instruction you want is this with my grip, the horse version of it, shipping and pitching is like a two per load. Because you don't struggle with because as soon as you put the thumb on the shaft and such, everything that was easy now is that your body wants to do this by default. And what happens with the grip of the modern stuff is that once you put this stuff, your wrist and such is in this position. That means your elbow doesn't want to go in that position by default. It doesn't want to do this, it wants to do that. Because here's what happens. You have to bend your wrist, now your elbow doesn't go here, because now you get just what that what wants to happen. And then people start, you know, trying to prevent the hook, you have to bend the wrist. A lot of release. And they've been teaching this for 120 years. It just makes golf so difficult. You want to make it easier on yourself. One of my members, he's a lefty, by the way, and uh, he has a kid who, uh, you know, and he said he wants to, you know, he's six years old now, you know, not his kid, him. And he said he wanted to match his distance with the kid and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, you're going to get there. And he'd be kind of worried the last few months. And as he has said, and I made the like, latest video, he started applying that. He played with a body of his friend, uh, his son. He also went to college with him, and he said he outdrew him now on some holes. It's not as long as his, but he's taller than him. He's like, I don't know, 35 years younger, whatever. And it was hard driving him on some holes, and he beat him in score. For the kids, they learned his thumb and the grip and all this stuff. This guy, a lefty, uses my grip, the horse version of it and then start playing with it. At some point, when you practice this, you're gonna have your shipping and pitching working without them any problem. As good as can be. So if you put your body in positions that the brain wants to turn, they turn it back, that's gonna cause stress if you want to keep it there. That's what they teach you in modern golf. And brain learning is that if you hit a really good shot, if you go out and practice, you hit a really good shot that you want to hit, you need to stop what you're doing then and break. Take a break. Go take a cup of coffee, tea, you know. Go check your phone or something like that. You have to shift the context so because when you hit that shot, it means that your brain has a fresh imprint of it, a fresh memory imprint. There's three things that happen in, in the shot. You get a feedback from the shot with your hands because club hits the ball or whatever. It's supposed to hit the ball, not anything else. Then you have the sound of it, whatever happens with the club and the ball and everything else. And then you have the visual imprint that what happens with the ball after. You know, the trajectory of it, you know, if it's curving left to right and so on. If it's kind of have the spin rate that it's supposed to have and it kind of slightly raise up and then drop off. All those information is coordinated into your brain to become some memory. But the important thing here is once you hit that shot, you need to take a break and not continue to hit shots. Because the relearning after the shot with all this feedback happens after the shot. This is why, you know, you see me when I do this, I kind of take a break. I talk to the camera and you guys and ladies, everybody else, right, for a bit. Because I, I, re, I change my brain's reference for the context. 
And if you're on the range or something like that and you want to practice, well, you can go and putt instead for a few minutes. The fresh memory imprint is very important because your brain is building pathway it's, and you need to learn to sort the information. And you can't sort the information if you don't tell it how to sort the information. If you want to get better, you need to sort the information in different contexts or different, as I like to call it, different boxes. If you don't shift your context and let whatever shot you hit steam a little bit and let the learning happen because the brain is actually building a pathway, sending out the neuron to a different neuron cluster uh, or build even to connect that. That takes time. It actually takes a few days or a week or whatever it is. So whenever when I hit the great shot the way I want when I'm out here practicing, and this is my third time doing that, First time when I was using Hans version of the grip, it felt really awkward. My brain was fighting to, you know, get a, everything this in order all the stuff. Second time, it started to get to the point where I started to, you know, adapt to it. Because I do this all the time. When I hit the shot I want, I take a break. And let the learning happen often without me, you know, interfering with the, because if you start hitting more shots and more shots, the brain can learn really well just becomes confused. You want to do that shit? Feel free for it, but you know, I don't recommend it. And this strategy, if you like, is based on how the Talent Code book uh, was uh, released about 40 years ago, 50 years ago. But you couldn't teach people how to how that work. I can. Now, the thing with the takeaway is that people do not understand that if I do a lift, which is the lift, that's what you're supposed to do in the takeaway. Because if you use my grip, you know, one of the things that happens is that I'm doing a tilt on the lift here. I lift my arms in that direction, right? That's how your takeaway is supposed to be. Because if I start to turn here now, massively, now I have to fix that by rotating my pelvis, not the hips, because the hips can't do anything. I need to rotate my pelvis get there but now I have to stand up and put another tremendous stress on your lower back you usually put stress on your foot because you can see two groups you know angling the foot you know to impact they're kind of lifting up they kind of fly into impact because they have to kind of jump on it because they're stuck and once people start adapting to my grip and Hans version of it and they start learning to tilt and lift at some point the brain is gonna go oh, okay this is what I need to do I don't need to do this. As soon as I start to do that, I'm stuck now. I need to fix things into impact. And I've been teaching people that the thumb and the grip, the inside takeaway, whatever you people call it, so people don't know what position they're supposed to have. When you have the correct position, like I teach people to do, it usually feels wrong. One of my members last year went all in my grip and my takeaway. With the modern grip and modern takeaway instruction, he had lost 40 yards of his driving distance. He lost 40 yards. For two years, he couldn't play in really fun golf. Last year, when he started doing my stuff, I told him to post a video, and he did the takeaway wrong because he had been doing this for a long time. He started doing this. Keep doing this, and I said, that's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching you to do this. And he told me that it feels bad. And I said, I know. Keep doing it. Because if you want to learn, you have to create enough difference. If you don't have enough difference, your brain can't distinguish between what you want to do, and what you've been doing. It becomes in the same box. It's like the Schrodinger's books with the cat. Is a cat dead or alive? And the only way to know is to open the box. Or you can listen into the box. He didn't tell you that. All you need to do is put your ear to the box and go, is the cat alive in here? And you can, you know, listen to it and it's, it's alive all the time. Because there is no cat or box. Most people don't get that, by the way. It's a mind experiment. So, what I want you to do is very simple. Use my grip and Hans version of it. Practice that until it gets familiar. Thicky grips. I use Karma Tritis. Thick 7-Eleven grip tape. Change on one club and use this for a whole season. And then your brain will adapt to it. You will feel sort of feel normal. And then you can start, you know, playing 
practicing with that one club on your range and then you know at some point your brain will start to know oh this is easier so as soon as you start doing this lifting up and tilting and that to support that because your body will always support right as a lot of people will be confused about that is it a lift or is it a tilt and i said which one am i doing now am i doing a lift or a tilt or it's the same thing at the same time it's kind of difficult to say right because a lot of people uh, you know are educated in golf and since the information you have about golf is usually 100 percent wrong but you're acting on it like it's 100 percent correct it leads to misinformation, misleading, and struggle with golf. And you become frustrated, and you, uh, you know. A lot of my, you know, members who've been applying, you know, my grip and my takeaway alone, have started to get to the point where they start to feel it's longer, they hit straighter, they can play better golf, you know, they can shoot lower scores, they don't struggle. And they kind of go like, but it can't be this easy. And I said, how can you, if you're doing it, if you're actually doing it, and they go, yeah, how can you even doubt that? That that's difficult to do when you can do it. That's how your memory influences your perception of reality. Now it's easy to play golf and you doubt that because everybody been teaching you and telling you and everything, you've ever, every friend you have who play golf, every commentator in golf, they will tell you how difficult this game is, and it's not. If you know what you're doing, like I'm teaching people to do, golf becomes easy. But all this information people have been feeding you for 120 years. They had this guy, Immelman, he was a previous two pro, you know, pretty good player. And he was analyzing Cameron Jung's swing on PGA Tour. And he was telling people that the ground pushes back. And uh, one of my members said that's new to third law, you know, for equal force, becomes an equal reaction. Newton third law, right? But it doesn't apply here. Well, watch this. I'm gonna jump up and I'm gonna wait for my to the ground to push back. And I'm weighing like, I don't know, 80 plus. I mean, if I jump up and land, it's not gonna be 80 kilos landing. It's gonna be more, maybe 90, maybe 100 kilos, depending on how high I jump. And then the ground is gonna push back. And that means I'm gonna break some you know, bones in my body if that happens. And I'm still waiting for the ground to push back. It doesn't happen, do you know why? Because the ground absorbs the energy I'm putting down. It doesn't push back. But you can have a PK tour previously, like Immelman, telling you that's what happens in the golf swing when it can't happen. This description is wrong. Now, if you get one thing wrong like that and no one and I mean, no one apparently understands that's wrong. The PGA Tour, you know, whoever published that, and everybody else watching that, they go, oh yeah, that makes sense. The ground pushes back, okay? No, it's not happening. It's wrong. I'm the guy who tells people that, you know, that's bullshit. This guy, Immelman, is incompetent. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then people tell me, well, uh, there must be a good reason why he tells you that. Well, uh, is Santa Claus real? And people go, well, no. Superman? Well, no. James Bond? Well, no. But it seems like they are real because they have movies about them and you have Christmas and so on. But it's still, it's not real. It's not happening. And then you have a uh, Immelman, previous PGA2 Pro and such telling people that it's actually happening when it doesn't happen. That's called misleading information. That means that you don't know what you're talking about. Because the memory in, in the conceptual understanding of things is that once you learn to do, most people don't know this about learning. Think about it. When you try to learn something you've never done before, you're gonna fail, 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 until you get a little bit more successful on that, and at some point, your brain is gonna, ah, this is how I do it. Your brain is gonna go at that point, boom, you, you, you can just do it. And everything you did before that kind of vanish. You don't think about that anymore. You fail to that point when you can do it. And when you can do it, everything else before that just goes away. People can't remember how they learn to ride a bike, drive a car, walk, talk, 
coordinate how to eat with a spoon or something like that. It, you can't remember. When they golf, you people, you know, when they learn golf swings and can do things, they get to a point where they can, you know, okay, what all you need to do is, you know, and they tell you something like that. And then you try to do it, you can't do it. Because you have to break it down, like I do. Keep your body still, lift the club up, boom. Okay, I can't hit the ball like that, okay? All I need to do then is to go to my left side when I let the club drop. That's the easy shipping I can do. And I'm using my grip and horse version of it. That's how easy shipping is to teach people. They learn to lift the club up, they learn to relax and drop it, and they learn to shift whatever people call that because it's automatic now. It's not something you need to learn, it's automatic. You've been doing it your whole life. And then you just go, okay, I need to turn now, not rotate because rotation doesn't work. There's a fucking good reason for that. Anyway, and I'm just, I'm gonna turn now before the club hits the ball at the same time. Man, that's a fucking great shot again. Whew. My body goes, mm, uh, feel it. And I don't need to hit more shots. Some people call that amplification of emotional. Feels good, man. Because what people teach you in golf is failure. You can never learn to do golf when they teach you in modern golf and such, or alternative golf since they become too difficult to do. You struggle to hit the same shot time and time again. Of course you do. Because you can't do it with the modern golf swing. The reason why is because when they put the thumb on the shaft, you can't have connection. You can't sequence the body naturally and have connection with the thumb on the shaft. It's not possible. I know that people will tell me it is possible because if you put the towel on your arm and do it like you have to ask yourself why do they have to do that because they lose connection they say because they never had it if you have something you can move naturally you never lose it do you lose how you walk jump move your body no unless you get a stroke or something like that you never forget that it's kind of difficult to do this also oh. I keep a hold of that balance, well, that's very difficult to do. So how can I do that? And something like a ship now suddenly becomes, you know, use the modern grip, all that stuff, just suddenly becomes fucking difficult and I kind of want to go to my right foot because that's how my brain wants to kind of do this now. Because of the left wrist, I have to do this. It's very difficult to feel the weight shift and weight transfer. This. You can give my grip and horse version of it. That becomes automatic by default. It's easy, not difficult anymore. You don't get frustrated with your ships and pitches anymore because this is easy to master because it's built natural body mechanics. And no one in the world has understood this in golf in 400 years. This information goes against everything you believe in everything you learn about golf because they didn't know anyway i'm so tired now i actually don't want to go and pick my balls up because it's warm and i have me cfs long covid whatever people call it that means my energy levels are basically exhausted and i didn't have a good day to start with so i'm just gonna end it hope you enjoy this a uh, little bit insight into the grip takeaway shipping pitching Use my grip, buy one grip that's thicker, put a lot of layers of grip tape, learn to practice with that. But this allows you to start having your elbow in the proper position. And at some point, it will help you swing more natural than you ever knew was possible. No one in the world can teach you that, except this guy. That's me, by the way, or BMW.